Hi there, this is the first part of tracing an image in SCAL 3.044. I am going to do part two, which covers more on print and cut. Simply I ran out of time in this one. Hi, my name is Pandora, and this is a video about tracing an image in SCAL. Uh, I usually do it in Inkscape, but I thought I'd have a go with this one today. And this is for Lessa. Um, who's struggling a bit with it. I must say, I think you're very brave jumping in and going print and cut when you first got your machine. It took me ages to build up to it. Anyway, on we go. So the first thing I would do normally is go to File, Trace Image, and this dialog box would come up. Now, what you do then is you browse and you select your image, and once you click on it, it will appear, the trace will appear in this window. I'm not, I've tried this with this file and it doesn't work well, so I'm not going to waste time doing it. But what I would say is if you get a good trace in that window, you can then make sure you add the image layer so you can do print and cut. So that's what I would suggest. And you can check on blackout if you want to. You'll just get one blackout line. But it doesn't work well with this file. So as I say, I'm just going to cancel that. So the first thing I'm going to do is place the image. And I'm going to click on place image. Go to where I've got the file and click on open. And it takes a minute or two just to come in. I should point out just while it's doing it that I am working on a mat which is custom sized for A4 paper. So let me just click on the mat. Up here I've custom sized it for 8.2, says 8. Okay, let's just change that. Let's click on it. It should say 8.26, which is the size of my paper. I'm glad I noticed that, otherwise there would be issues later on. And 11.69. So if you have a printer that's bigger or smaller, clearly you can adjust the size of your mat. But I know I need to work on this mat, this size, for this to work with my printer. I did happily do this video on a 12 by 12 mat and thought that's completely ridiculous. I don't have a 12 by 12 printer. So learn from my mistake. Work out what size your printer is and set your mat to the same size. So the orientation is vertical or portrait. That seems to be the most useful way to be in scale. And if I click on this image, um, this is a scan. This is not the original file, which is possibly why there are issues with it. Um, because it comes from, I think it's called Delightful Doodles, and uh, it was a, it's an image that, uh, it's a file that Lessa has bought and paid for, but she sent me this scan just so I can show her how to trace. Um, we're not breaching any copyright rules here. Um, it is a lovely file, by the way, so it looks like uh, delightfuldoodles.com. Well worth going to have a look at, I think. Anyway, back to how to trace the image. So at the moment, I can see it doesn't fit very well on this, so I'm going to click on it, I'm going to come across the position and size box and say keep proportions by making sure there's a tick there. Just below it, there's a button that says rotate. It, it can do lots of things. We certainly don't want to skew it at the moment. So I'm simply going to click on rotate by um, 45 degrees counterclockwise. I'm actually going to go clockwise just for the sake. So I'm going to go once, twice, and now I know it's at 90 degrees. And you can see it's only just going to fit on the mat, but you know, the edges are a bit close, but you might get away with it. So how do we trace? Well, I'm going to make it just a little bit bigger. I'm going to do that by clicking on the mat and clicking on 70%, just so that uh, I can get as much space in the window as I can. And what you do is, in this case, you use the draw tool to draw your shapes. And quite simply, with one of these things, if you went to click, click, click and click, you'd get a shape. And that's where if you're going to draw, you do things. Um, interestingly, uh, just so you know, um, if you actually want to draw a line, I did mention this one of my other videos, if you want to just draw a line, you click once, come across, click again, and then to get rid of it, to stop the line, just press the escape key on your keyboard, and then you have a line. It's just one of those daft things that's useful to know. Because I don't actually want the line there, I'm just going to uh, select it getting onto it, and then delete it. So back to the pen tool. What I'm going to do is start here and then click achieve, click, make sure a thing comes up, uh, a node thing. 
I have, is this Sunday night? I've lost my brain a bit. Um, yeah, node is the word I'm looking for, a square box, and click and drag across, click again. Every time you come to a corner, click. Now you can see I'm actually having quite a difficulty at this kind of size doing this. So what I'm going to do is hit the escape key, just select that line, and delete it. And to make life simpler for myself, I'm going to grab the zoom in tool, and I'm going to click and drag around this area here. And we're going to start in this corner. No particular reason. You can start anywhere you like. It just um, strikes me as a good place to start. So again, select the pen tool, come across, click on the corner. You see the node, you know you started. Come to this corner, click on the node. And it's up to you if you want to be on the line, or I tend to go just outside them, uh, but you might want to go right onto the line. Entirely up to you. Click and drag. Now at this point, you can see that um, I can't get down to the next point. The quickest way to get there is to come across, don't worry about what this uh, line thing is doing, because as long as you don't click, nothing will happen. Come across and grab the scroll bar. Now, you do not need to be able to see where this point is, this one that I've just clicked. So don't worry about these random lines either, they'll disappear in a while. So what we need to do is just click and drag until we get down to the next set of lines, and then come back, click on the edge, and carry on. And it really, with this sort of shape, because it's nice straight lines for 90% of the way, really doesn't matter that much. I'm going to go across and grab the school bar again, and come down. As I say, because you don't need to see it, it's quite useful. Uh, when you're coming along this way, you can come down and grab the, the bottom scroll bar, which is right along to this corner, and we go click, click, click. Uh, grab this one and come up. Let's get as much in as we can. So another one, two. Um, I just want to go right the way around so I can show you what happens when you finally get to the other end. But as you can see, it really isn't taking me that long. I need to go to the bottom to grab this one. That's our start point, and we'll come all the way across and click on that. Right, let's just hit the escape key to get rid of that. It would help if I hit the right key. Let me just get rid of this. I didn't actually mean to draw that, delete, right. What I want to do is change the selection tool, come over here, and let's change that back to 70% and hit enter on my keyboard. Click onto here, and now you can see here is our outline. So because I come from a sign inkscape and sign cut background, I always tend to switch the fill off. It helps me to see what I'm up to. So to do that, you can come across this appearance box. And here under color, if you click on color, you can say none. And what you're left with is the line. Now, because it's a little difficult to see this pale blue on the screen, if I want to change the color, I can simply click on this colored box here it will bring up uh, the dialog box and I can say let's make it a nice bright blue and say OK. So that's how you would change the line stroke style. Now I'm making an assumption that what you want to do is print and cut. So there's a couple of things we need to check. At the moment it all looks nice and dandy and you think OK well I could go off to print and then I could cut it and that would be fine. Ah, please learn from my mistakes. <laughs> Don't do it yet, okay? Don't do it yet. Up here, um, underneath the cutter box, there is a an option called preview options. And if you click on it, this little dialog box will pitch up. And what you want to do is show print and cut registration marks, show print margins, and you can also show the pen colors and you can show the nodes if you like. You can switch them all on, you know. But certainly you want these first two on. Absolutely, you must have the first two on and then click on OK. And why are we doing that? Well, we're doing it because when you come up and use this preview button here, what it does is it ignores the drawing, but it shows, and I'm going to zoom in on something here. Let me just zoom in on this corner because it will make it easier for you to see what I'm talking about. Right, can't see anything at the moment. Let's change back to the selection tool and let's come back to print preview. Now, here is what I want you to see. Can you see this black line, dot, and a black line? 
that is one of the registration marks and it's actually got a number one on it. That's not a double one on my map, that's a one that's saying it's the first registration mark. I have a Canon IP6600 d and that's my print margin. This print margin will come up with whatever your default printer is, so yours will say something different to mine, assuming you have a different printer. If we just zip across to the other side, we can see, and the print preview comes off as soon as you do anything else, so let's just click print preview on again. You can see here that this is set outside, so that's a bit of an issue. We have to sort it out. This mark, the one on the other side, and the one that's directly below this, number three, have to be inside this dotted line, which is my print margin. So the simplest way to do that is click back. Let's just change this back to 70% so I can see what I'm up to. And I'm simply going to click and drag around the whole thing and then making sure that that key proportions is checked. I'm just going to shrink it down quite a lot. Now, if you want it as big as possible, you're going to have to mess around a bit. What I'm then going to do is come over and use the align to the middle horizontally um, button. So it lines it up directly in the center. And let's go back and look at our preview. And this time I can see just about, let's zoom in again because it's a little unclear. It's always worth zooming in to check this. That one is fine. Let's zip across to the other side in the same magnification. Click on preview again, and that one should be fine. So with any luck at all, we should be all set for print and cut now. Um, I'm going to change it back to 70% again. I like working at 70%. It allows me to see just about all of the map and just see the top and the bottom, and it gives me the best look of the, view, of the um, actual what I'm working on. So. One of the things that you might want to consider doing is this blue line, you need it to do the cutting when you're doing print and cut. However, you do not want it to print, but you need to print the registration marks. So what somebody suggested that what you could do is come down and switch off the um, eye, and that will certainly get rid of it. The problem is if you then send it through print and cut to print, it will say there is no cut marks, therefore there is no registration marks, so that doesn't work. And just while I'm over here, um, a little thing, I like to name layers so I know which layer I'm on. So if you want to name a layer, what you do is right click on this area and then click on layer properties. It will bring this dialog box up and I'm going to call this my cut line, so I know that it is. And so I'm just going to bring it back up for two seconds, just for I don't know, efficiency's sake. I'm going to change it to the same blue as the line, so I know that that's the box with the blue line. I can right click on this one, and if you've got a lot of layers that you're doing, it might be worth doing this. Sometimes it isn't, but it's up to you. Just I thought I'd show you how to do it. So that's my original image that I'm doing, and I'm going to click on OK. So I've got the two lines here. So how do I send it to print without it showing? Well, the answer is I make sure I've selected it, and I know it's that one because it's got the blue line here, and I simply go color and then none, just the same way you did with fill. Now you might think, well, it won't know it's there, but actually, again, if we click on this preview window, can you see it remembers it's there, even though we can't see it. So at this point, what I would do is send it to print. Now, I'm going to stop now because I'm going to run out of time on YouTube upload, so I will be doing part two, which carries on from where this one finishes. Hope you'll listen.